y'all. Today we've got some new babies being born on the farm. We actually are having quail. So I heard them starting to hatch out in the incubator last night. So I'm gonna show y'all what we use for a brooder. It's a very simple technique. Um, it works for us right now. We may um, you know, build a bigger brooder on down the road if we start hatching more eggs, but this works pretty well for us right now. So I'm gonna show y'all the method from start to finish, taking them out of the incubator and putting them in the brood. So um, first, I'm gonna show y'all how we prepared their food. So we, I just use a little coffee grinder, just a little simple coffee grinder. Um, we use a game bird starter mix for the, um, for their food. And you just have to kind of grind it a little bit to pulverize it. They can't eat those big pieces of, of game bird food. So I just kind of pulse it a little bit on the coffee. Okay, just enough to kind of get it kind of ground. I try to do all this before we um, actually op open the incubator just so I can have everything ready so I disturb them as little as possible. So, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna grind that a little bit more. So, see those are just too big for those little bitty baby birds to get to, so. All right, yeah, that looks good. That consistency is good. So I'm just gonna grind up a little bit to, um, to have everything ready when they come outside, so. Um, you could probably use a food processor or maybe even a blender if you don't have a coffee grinder. This is just what we have, so this is what we use, so. Okay, so our current brood box is actually just a 45 gallon um, Sterilite box. Patrick cut the top out and used some pieces of wood to secure some wire to the top. So he cut out the bottom to the Sterilite container. And he made a wire mesh bottom attached it to some wood frame. And he, he added this PVC pipe after doing that just to lift them up off the off of the ground. It helps keep them cleaner, helps keep the bottom of the cage cleaner. And we actually just used whatever we have. These are um, actually feed bags. They work really well to catch some of the droppings from the birds. And then when, when we clean out their brood box, I can take this and put it in my compost bin and I'm good to go, so. Um, and I'm gonna put some blue paper towels, some shop towels on the bottom of that. For the first week anyway, um, the birds really don't need to be walking on that wire mesh. So I'm gonna use these blue shop towels and layer the bottom of that. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get the water ready and then I'll go get the birds. So I learned, I learned a lesson the hard way by the, um, as far as the water temperature for the birds, you can't just run their water just cold out of the tap because um, you'll kill some of them if you do that. They don't like their water being really cold. So it needs to be lukewarm. They prefer a temperature of 99 degrees, you know, between 95, 100 degrees. And uh, you don't wanna just give them cold water. Let's see. And after we finish, after I clean the brood box out, I'll just take these paper towels and throw them in my compost bin. So um, it's easier on the bird's feet the first week. Um, we'll eventually remove these. And like I said, everything's gonna go in the compost bin. Okay, so I got that ready. And this is just a standard, that's just a standard water that we use. Um, I do have some room temperature water that I'm gonna put in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there and um, get everything ready to bring the birds out. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is make sure that there are no eggs that are pipping. 
make sure there's no little birds that are starting to try to break out of their shell because when I open the incubator sometimes that can um, the change in humidity can can shrink wrap them in their egg and make it hard for them to get out so now usually before I move any of these to the incubator we usually want their their feathers to be dry um, and those look pretty good that those have been in there for the day since this morning early so I'm gonna go ahead and get them out I try to do it as quickly as possible just so I don't change the the humidity and the temperature in there very much so all right let me put this down and get them out okay all right little babies let's get y'all out I think they're gonna go gangbuster see them moving all around in there well, let's get them out okay babies one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, I'm gonna quickly just try to get some of these these eggs up. The ones that they hatched out of just to kind of clean things. Ooh, that one's I think that one's in the process of coming out, though. So. I'll quickly gather these, these eggs that they've already hatched out of. Oh no, babies, we're fixing to go put you in a brooder. Bear with me. Give me a minute. Let's put you in a brooder, babies. All right, I think that's all of them. Okay. All right, little babies. Let's put you in the brooder. Okay. I'm just going to put them over there by the water. Okay, sweet babies. There you go. There you go. Okay. You don't want them running around on something that doesn't have any traction when they're young because they'll get splay legged where their legs will just kind of run out from under them and not hold them up. That happens with some of them anyway. A small percentage of them get splay legged, even with the paper towels under them. So, all right, so we got them in there. You can take them and dip them, dip their little beaks in the water if you want to. We don't usually do that. They usually wander around and they find that water, so, um, but you can. I've seen some people take their chicken, uh, their little chicken beaks and dip them in the water. What do you think, babies? Okay, so with the, with the food, I just drizzle a little of the dry food right out there. And they'll get in there and find that. When they get a little bit bigger, I'll actually put the food in a feeder and um, they'll be able to get to it. So, but right now while they're just, you know, Right now, while they're just freshly hatched, I just I just drizzle a little bit of the blended food out and then they've got their water. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the top on and put the heat lamp on. If it were colder, if it were the winter months, then we would actually suspend the heat lamp within the box. But since it's warmer outside, I'm just gonna let the heat, heat lamp sit on top of them. Um, I'll come out with my little thermometer, my little temperature gauge, and see what the temperature is. But that's just our little heat lamp, and we just let it sit on there on the top of the wire. Obviously, you don't want it to touch the plastic. You know, you need to make sure it's secured. Uh, not going to blow over and touch the plastic because it'll 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 melt a hole in the plastic, and um, and then you'll come out here with that thing will possibly be sunk down in there with the birds so um so they've got their water they've got their food they've got their heat lamp they're already starting to eat y'all they're already starting to peck at that food let me show you see they've already found the food there you go baby birds go get you some food so i'll come back out here in a little bit and if you know 
bring my thermometer and see what the temperature is down in there. And if, if I don't think they're warm enough, then I'll, I'll suspend this light down in there um, just to make them a little bit warmer. So, okay. So we, we really enjoy the quail because um, it, it's easy for us to do a portion um, size for us with it, just be two, with it just being two of us at home right now. You know, we don't really need a whole chicken to cook for, for us. So um, it's easier for us to not waste anything and maybe to not have leftovers, um, just to be able to pull out some quail to eat. So uh, we also like the fact that they don't take up as so much room as the chickens. To, to us right now, they're just an easier animal for us to raise for sustainability. Um, so we, we really like them right now. Plus the eggs, they, they produce eggs in the winter. They don't stop laying eggs in the winter. We'll have another few days with those eggs in the incubator letting them hatch. Um, and then it'll start all over again. As soon as we start hearing the eggs hatching, we start gathering the eggs um, and putting them in the, the little turning tray, we go ahead and start gathering the eggs to get it ready for the next incubation time. So it's kind of a revolving process with us. We're either got eggs in the incubator, we've got eggs hatching and gathering eggs to put in the incubator. Um, and it's working out really well from when the time when they need to come out of the brood box, when they get their feathers and then we put them out into the tractor out in the yard. Um, the timing seems to be working out pretty well with that. So. We probably need to build one more quail tractor. Um, right now we only have one of the rabbit tractors in use, so we, so we ended up modifying it and using it for a quail tractor too. Um, but when we have more rabbits bred, we're gonna, we're gonna need another quail tractor, so. Um, I can't, you know, I don't have anything negative to say about the quail. We love the way they taste. We love how easy they are to take care of. Um, my favorite way to eat them personally is on the grill. Um, but you can you can cook them any way you cook anything else, you know, just play with the recipes and see um, see what your preferences are. So um, oh, Let me go show you all the rabbits. We got some baby rabbits, too. So Let's go look at them Patrick's working on the Bronco getting the fenders put on it. So he's excited about that um, Let's see here, we got some little bitty baby rabbits. Hey Mopsy, can I show them your babies? These babies are uh, about four or five days old. I'll have to look at the calendar to be exact, but Mopsy, I'm just gonna show them. Just show them one of your babies. Quit trying to eat my camera, Mopsy. She had 11 this time. Her first litter, she had 11 too. All right, Mom, see just a minute, baby. Ooh, there's a little black one. So, they're cute, cute, cute. All right, Mom, see, I'm not gonna mess with them. Okay, all right, I'll put you back up. You can go back in there. All right, I'm gonna leave you alone. There's Reba. We actually weaned Reba's last baby yesterday so they're all out in the tractor most of them have been in the in the tractor but the last one got weaned yesterday all right we're trying to eat my camera baby girl hey lou what you doing baby hey baby lou so the nasturtiums are a wonderful companion plant they help keep pests away and you can also eat the flowers and eat the leaves so Oh my gosh, I have got some, I've got some tomatoes getting red. I've never had red tomatoes June 1st. Boo, we got some ripe tomatoes. They're going to be ripe. What you think, Lou? I know, boo. So, so these 25 gallon grow bags work really well because you can, you can put more than one thing in there. I've actually got a shishito pepper a jalapeno and a nasturtium and um, that is a an indigo cherry tomato that my husband's boss gave us so hey babies now you do have to be careful with those heat lamps it can catch hay on fire it can catch your barn on fire I had a co-worker that actually had one in her doghouse and it burned her house down 
not the dog house, it burned the house house down. So, you gotta be careful with those heat lamps. So. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed seeing the new life on um, the farm today. And we, we're kind of getting in the groove. We're kind of getting in the groove with it, the way the quail hatch and move from the incubator to the, to the brooder and the rabbits, you know, going to the rabbit tractor. So um, there's just something very satisfying um, about being able to provide your own meat and knowing that these animals have had a wonderful life. They've been loved. They've been able to you know, spend a lot of time in the yard and their um, tractors. Ventured into raising quail or raising rabbit, they're, they're easy to do. I mean, I think probably in most neighborhoods you could have quail and your neighbors wouldn't even know. There are a lot of great YouTubers out there. Um, Living Traditions Homestead with Kevin and Brooke, they are who we've learned a lot from about rabbits. So check their channel out. They've got a wealth of knowledge. So um, if you're inspired to, um, to just get started, then do some research and you gotta start somewhere, so. And we will catch y'all later. See ya.